From all my airs and graces to the little things I do. Everything is pointless without you. This is the Rode NT-USB Plus, a new USB condenser microphone that promises studio quality audio in a simple package. But it's anything but simple. I'm gonna tell you what I liked about it, what I don't, and whether or not it's 169 US dollars, nice, or 890 ringgit price tag is worth it. No, I wasn't reading the script, I was just uh, checking the audio levels because I'm recording with the iPad Pro. Full disclaimer, Rode actually sent this microphone over for this review, but as usual, we do reserve our right to an unbiased opinion. Also, this entire video is recorded with this microphone connected to my iPad Pro, as well as my desktop for some of that DSP processing stuff. I wanted to record everything using my Microsoft Surface Pro 9, but I ran into some issues. More on that later. Anyways, if you're looking for a USB microphone to record your podcast, music, or just level up your streaming game, then Perhaps the NT-USB Plus microphone is a good solution for you for under 200 US dollars. Let us start with what I like about it first. A number one would be the build quality. It has an all metal construction made in the land down under. Even the dowels are metal and feel very smooth in operation. Um, it looks identical to the original NT-USB, except that they have swapped out the uh, USB Type-B printer cable port for the new USB Type-C port that we have here. Number two would be the analog volume controls. At the top, you have the zero latency direct monitoring volume control for your headphones that are actually connected to this uh, audio jack right here and the bottom one is the uh, headphone volume controls that controls everything that your connected device is outputting uh, to the microphone's headphone jack. Pay in mind that the top dial is only controlling the volume of your direct monitoring and not the actual input gain of your microphone. So if you've turned it all the way to zero, you might not hear yourself, but everyone else will hear you in your online conference call, uh, you know, your stream, uh, Discord, whatever. So just be careful. Number three, it has a well-integrated pop filter so that you don't have to deal with this unsightly clamp-on mess. See, so flimsy. That's what she said. Number four, this two meter long USB-C cable. Uh, it's very handy if you want to connect your microphone to your desktop PC that is a little bit further away so that you can minimize any fan noise. And it's really robust too. Number five is the audio quality. So this microphone has a cardioid pattern, which means that it will be most sensitive to any sound coming from directly in front of it and completely not sensitive to anything behind it. So that's pretty good to reject any noise. Also, its recording sample rate and beat depth has been upgraded to 48 kilohertz and 24 bit from the older 16 bit. I find that this microphone is most suitable for voices in both spoken word and singing because you get beefy bass and lower mids that support a very natural sounding mid range, which extends smoothly into the upper mids and treble uh, without any sibilance issues before getting a tiny boost above the 12 K range for a little bit more air and shimmer. However, if you have a lower mid heavy voice like me, I would avoid using this microphone this close up. Instead, I would just back up a little bit more to reduce some of those issues. Personally, I didn't like it as much for instruments like guitar and piano because again, that uh, lower mid range could be a little overpowering at times. But feel free to leave a comment down below if you want to see a mic comparison video between the NT-USB plus and any other USB microphones that we've tested so far. Anyways, here's a quick sound test for your reference. I love it when her mind wanders And she loves it when I stay home I know when she's lost and she knows when I feel alone From all my airs and graces to the little things I do Everything is pointless without you Of all the dreams I'm chasing There's only one I choose Everything is pointless without you 
Number six, the app is actually pretty useful. Now, nothing beats years of knowledge in audio engineering, recording and mixing. But if you're a noob that just wants to add on a quick noise gate to remove background noise or big bottom effects for some. God voice movie trailer coming soon in theaters near you. It's all about that base. You could just get into the Rode Unify app on your desktop PC or use the Rode Reporter app with your mobile devices and just do that. Also, I find that high pass filter to be very useful with this microphone in particular because it's lower mids, as I said, can be a little bit overpowering. And you can customize different mixers for your chat, your headphones, your stream, and every single one of those mixers will be available as individual inputs into your streaming software like um, OBS for instance, which is pretty handy. Next, onto the juicy part where I tell you what this microphone did wrong to annoy me. Apa dosa dia lah. Number one, there is no mute button. Whether if your mother is screaming at you from the kitchen because you forgot to take the trash out, or your girlfriend slash boyfriend, hashtag gender equality, hashtag already 2023, is threatening to throw your PC out the window because you forgot date night while playing Valorant, everybody needs a mute button sometimes. You might think I'm nitpicking, but considering how many microphones in the same price range actually has a mute button and also rising privacy concerns, it's actually still a pretty big deal. But honestly, that wouldn't have been such a big deal if they actually gave us an input gain control on the microphone because you can just crank it all the way to zero and mute the mic that way. And this microphone does come with two different volume dials, but neither of those control the input gain. You have to do that in software. Number three, I won't stand for this flimsy stand. The microphone construction is very solid, but this stand is made of a very light plastic, which makes the microphone a little bit difficult to adjust uh, considering how heavy it is compared to the stand. Honestly, I'll just get an arm or a mic stand. Number four, this giant logo on the pop filter. Spot the difference? Number five, the app is actually not super intuitive. Now, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, intuitive means that throw away the instructions manual. I got this. But nope, I had to watch a bunch of videos to actually figure out how to use the Rode Unify app. Which is a little ironic considering that they said that and it performs a bunch of different functions in one intuitive software interface. Okay, maybe I'm just nitpicking, but yeah, just watch the videos. On a more serious note, I actually ran into some issues while connecting this microphone to the Thunderbolt 4 port of my uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 9 and using the Rode Unify app at the same time. Uh, it worked fine if you just record the microphone directly into another application, but it just didn't work with the Unify app. Also, it seems to work fine with my phone, iPad Pro or desktop PC, which led me to believe that there could be an incompatibility issue with uh, Thunderbolt 4. So just leave a comment down below if you face similar issues. One more thing to note is that the iPad app only works in portrait mode and doesn't support multi-window. It's a little bit annoying if you want to pull up your script while uh, recording audio, which you often do, maybe voiceovers and stuff like that. So I have to use my phone for that. Hopefully all these unnecessary inconveniences get sorted out in future updates because it really affected the whole user friendliness of the app, uh, which is a shame because the DSP processing is actually pretty useful. To recap, here are the pros, mess, and cons of the Rode Anti-USB Plus. Priced at 169 US dollars, nice, or 890 ringgit, I give the Rode Anti-USB Plus a solid hashtag cheap buy 7.5 out of 10. Are there cheaper microphones out there? Sure. Does it have its flaws? Sure. But the Anti-USB Plus is still a quality microphone from an Aussie company that is very reputable for making, well, microphones. Also, to be honest, some of the features in the Unify app is actually pretty useful, like DSP processing and stuff like that. Uh, but I would just wish that they would give us a little bit more granular controls over some of those effects so that we can actually cater it for our individual voices. And wrote, please just get the Thunderbolt 4 compatibility issues sorted, uh, which actually bumped this down 
to a 7.5 from 8 because the newer laptops that come with USB-C most probably would have Thunderbolt 4 uh, as the default option. Anyways, that's everything I have to say about the Rode Anti-USB Plus. Uh, if you want to pick up one for yourself, feel free to use the links in the description because it will support us to make more content like this but won't cost you anything extra. If you thought this video was awesome, don't forget to give it a like and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to see more content like this. Also, don't forget to follow me and us ah, on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram for more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Bangsawan Shane. And I will see you in the next one.